all of us will have an opportunity every day to place God somewhere. He does not want to be second place. He does not want to be picked third or fourth. But he said, I am God, and beside me there is no other. And so I have made up in my mind, even though it might not be flashy, even though it might not, might not be something that people laud and applaud and commend, I've decided in my mind every day with his help, I'm going to place him first in my life. Because I believe that success in living for God is not an emotion, it's not a buzz, it's not a feeling. It's squaring our shoulders back and saying, Lord, I'm placing you absolutely first in my life. Our allegiance must be to God first. But you know, here in Western culture, we've got plan A when we get in trouble. If that doesn't work, we can go to plan B. We got plan C, plan D, plan E. You know, we got insurance, we've got the doctor, we got family, we've got this, we've got that, we belong to the union. There's all these different things that we can rely upon. And I think perhaps, though those things can be good and beneficial, I think there's a danger where we suddenly shift our trust from God to all of these other things. And when trouble comes, we look to everything else first, and God becomes our last-ditch effort after the insurance has failed and the doctors have failed and the union can't help and our friends can't help. You know, we had plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, plan E, plan F, and now we've got to go to plan G, God. And I'm not saying God will help you, won't help you if that's been the case. He's very gracious and long-suffering and merciful and slow to anger. But he's not honored when he's put last. He's not honored when we've gone to everyone and everything else first and we only go and seek God after the arm of the flesh has failed. We should go to him first when we're faced with conflict. And I think some of you will find that if you will go to God first, you're not going to have to fight the battle that you thought you'd have to fight after all. God will intervene in ways that you never imagined possible. If there is any message that is loud and clear throughout the pages of Holy Writ, it is that message which admonishes us to put God first. God says put me first and everything works out better. But I tell you, your week go better when you put God on the first day of the week. Your week will not flow if you use the first day of the week as your golf day. It will not flow if you use it as your fishing day. It won't flow if you use it as your family day. But I declare that if you start your week out, by putting God first, your whole week will go better. So the whole lesson of the scripture is put God first. Wise King Solomon, who spake 3,000 proverbs and did sing 1,005 songs, this man in writing to his son and leaving it on record for us, said in that third chapter of Proverbs, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways, not some, but in all of thy ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct thy path. We need to put God first, even when you're a young person and even an older person that's seeking a lifetime mate. You don't need to judge them by where they work how much money they make, how much education they have, what kind of car they drive. When that person seeks to be your lifetime partner, you need to hold that person up beside the Word of God and put that person in your heart for prayer and ask God whether this is my lifetime partner. A lot of people wouldn't be stuck where they are if they had acknowledged God first. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path.
You see, we honor God, we demonstrate faith, and we unlock blessings when we put him first. Your problem is not a problem to him, and we should go to him first and foremost. And if you do that, you find out you may have not have to go to a lot of other things that you were looking to. Prayer and the Word, the promises. Be for earthly health, be for human wisdom. And yes, God uses human vessels to bring his answers. Yes, he uses people as his instruments of deliverance many times. And thank God when he does it, but it's still true. If we do not ask, we do not have. I place him first in my life and then watch him work. Just put God first in those plans. Your plans are not wrong. You're trying your best to follow after the will of God. But put him first in those plans. Insert him at the beginning of those plans and give him license to change whatever he needs. Your plans are okay, but put him first. Be open to his direction. It is fascinating that the decision to put God first has nothing to do with what's going on in the world around me or what my present state of resource is. It is simply a decision and a deliberate action in my current reality. When should we put God first living into practice? Right now. Shouldn't we wait till we get more stuff? No. What do we have in our hand right now? Whatever you've got, start putting him first right now. The power to put God first is already in our hand. Wake up every morning and just start thanking him for just your life, your kids, your job, your house, your food, your clothes, your money, your car, your husband, your boyfriend. And then immediately after that, you'll have a better day. God must be first but you need to settle it in your heart as if the choice were eminent God first and included in that thought is leading our families into the same mindset and unshakable heart conviction that God must be first in our lives think of what Joshua said as for me and my house we will serve the Lord I'm going to lead them into this thing If you'll put God first in your life and talk to your kids, this is why we go to church. This is why, you know, Daddy reads the Bible. This is why we give God the first part of our income. And they will see the fruit of that in your life. The Lord does need to be first when it comes to our families. If it was within my power to give a gift to every person under the sound of my voice, It would be an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to us. To train our ears to get up in the morning to hear what God is saying to us. When God speaks, he's never wrong. When God gives direction, he's never out in left field. He knows what he's doing. Can I say it like this? There is not a greater time than right now to live a God-first life. There's nothing you cannot do if you and God are doing a righteous thing. The impossible can be done. It can be done. It can be done. Stop saying if. Say, I will by God's grace. Stop saying it's impossible. Nothing is impossible to those that believe. Nothing. Stop saying, I don't know the right people. You know, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, those people have lots of power. Master the art of forgetting the past. Paul says, forgetting those things which are past and reaching forward to what lies ahead. I press toward the prize of the calling of of Christ Jesus the Lord. Today is a new day. This day is a new day.